Greetings, it's Maxo Diddly here, and today I am going to be showing you how to check if a string is a valid integer using C++. So let's get right into it. Firstly, make sure you import IOStream at the top of your code. We'll be needing this for this tutorial. Afterwards, we are going to be doing STD string user input equals minus O1. Then we're going to do STD C out, arrowheads, STD bool alpha, arrowheads, is valid int, user input. So, don't worry about this, this is the function we're going to be making in a second. STD bool alpha basically means any booleans in this print statement will be printed as a true or a false because by default in C++ booleans are printed as 1 and 0, which you may not want. And cout is just printing to the console. This string represents user input. This tutorial is not covering how to get user input, only how to validate it. So let's go and define our function. So we are doing bool is valid int std string input. So bool is there because it's going to return a true or a false. Is valid int is the name of the function, and input is the parameter that we're going to validate. It's a string because we want to check if a string is a valid integer. So what is a valid integer? Well, it can be a negative number. It can be a positive number. It must be a whole number so it doesn't have any decimal points. It can't have a zero as its first digit if there are other digits following. And it can't start with a plus sign. Those are the parameters we're going to be checking. A minus sign is allowed for negative numbers. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check if the string's empty. If it's empty, no point checking anything else because if there's nothing in the string to check, it can't be a valid integer. So we're going to do if input.empty in brackets return false. The next step we're going to do is we're going to determine when we're going to start checking that every character is a digit in this string. So what we're going to do is we're going to do int start equals zero, and this will be the element in the string that will start checking if everything's a digit or not, because we don't want to check if a minus is a digit, and if there's a minus, then we need to start one character further into the string than we would otherwise. And the string's basically a character array, that's why I'm using the word index or element. So we do int start equals zero, then we do if input zero, so we're checking the first character of the string, double equals minus, then start is equal to one. Since we're allowing a minus at the start of our integer, because we allow for negative numbers, we need to put the start onto one. And you'll see why in a moment. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do if input start equals zero, and input.size is greater than one. Basically, you know how we don't want to have zero padding before any other digit in this number? Well, this code is going to do that. So we're checking if the start starting digit is equal to zero. And you might be thinking, but Max, why? Well, basically, we don't want to have a number that's, let's say, 007. So if, this, if we had 007 as our input, the start would be equal to zero, and the size of the input would be greater than 1, so it'd be invalid. But let's say we did negative 01. Well, the first digit would still be 0, and the input size would be greater than 1, so it's invalid. If we had minus 0, which isn't a valid integer, the input would start with 0 as the first digit, and it would still be greater than minus 1 because we have that minus character, and that is checked in this input.size. So we're checking if the first digit, which could be the first or the second digit of this string, element 0 or element 1, we're checking if either of those is a 0, depending on what our start number is here, and then we're checking if the size is greater than 1. And this basically gets rid of any 0 padding. If there's 0 padding before all the other digits, we don't want it. So you return a false. After that, we're just going to simply loop through all of the digits in this string, or all of the remaining characters in this string, and check if they're digits. So we do for int i equals start, because obviously we don't want to include the minus symbol. i less than input dot size, i plus plus. This is your standard loop for everything in the array. For loop. Then we can do if std is digit, 
input i, and then you put an exclamation mark in front of it to check if the current character we're looking at is not a digit. So if it's not a digit, we then do the return false because we found something that's not a digit in our string. However, if we successfully loop through every character in this string and don't execute this return false statement because they're all digits, we can put a return true after that for loop to return true because we've gotten through all of the validation checks and since we're still executing this function, that means it's a valid integer. So before we hit play, there is one tiny other thing we need to do. So if, you're, if you've already tried this code, you might have thought, wait, Max, but this is valid if it's just a minor symbol. I need to be correct. So what we do is we can do one last little check. We can do if input.length equals one return false. Basically, if we have a minus character as the first character in our string, but it's the only character in our string, so the length of that string is equal to one, we want to return a false because there are no digits to check. Just a little extra thing to really bulletproof your validation. So with that little bonus thing out of the way, we're going to hit play and see what happens. So it says false. So we had the input of minus 01, which is false. Let's do negative zero now. And it's still false. Let's do minus one. And it's true, which is really good. Let's do negative 1a. And it's false. Now let's do a. Let's do a bunch of a's and see what happens. Well, it says false. Now let's do 1, 2, 3. And it's a true. So, actually no, let's put a minus symbol at the end just to show that this works. And it's a false. So, thanks for being a great audience. Be sure to leave a like in the comment if you enjoyed and subscribe for more C++ tutorials. Thanks for being a great audience.